Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner, and I'm here with a man I'm privileged to call my friend, and a man I'm privileged to work with, the three biggest names in hard-boiled fiction, Max Allen Collins. How are you, mate? I'm fine. I'm really good. It's always good to see you. Oh, mate, it's always great to see you. So you're live from the middle of the US, From uh, you're coming at us uh, live from Iowa, and I'm here in West London. And we're yeah, bridging... Pretty much if you threw a dart at a ma map of the United States and hit the middle, this is it. This is flyover country. I'm right yeah. next door to the Mississippi River. Oh, See it from my house. You're, you are right in the middle of it, aren't you, mate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right in the middle of the American experience. And, uh, and what better place, what better place to dominate hard-boiled fiction from in 2022? Now, Max, what you know and I know is that this is a really big year for you and my, and my colleagues at Titan Books and my colleagues at Hard Case Crime and a, and a bunch of other places that you do a lot of fine work for. But we're here specifically to talk about two of your new and upcoming hard case crime projects, which right. everybody watching this can order from the links attached to this conversation. And that's uh, your new uh, quarry novel, Quarry's Blood, and uh, your new Nolan novel, Tough Tender, both yes. out from, from hard case crime. So why don't we start with the world of Quarry? What can you tell me about Quarry's Blood? Well, Quarry's Blood happened because of a Nolan novel, basically. The, you know, last time we talked, we were talking about Skim Deep, yes. which was the first Nolan novel in many, many years. I mean, decades. Nolan was the first character I created and was published and was published in 1973, the first book. And Quarry was the second one I created. And he was first published in, I think, about 75 which goes back a ways now. And we did Skim Deep as a kind of coda to the series. I had already ended it with a book, uh, a book called, uh, uh, well, it's gonna be called Mad Money when it comes out next year. But uh, it was called, it was, I forget even what it was called now. I've been, it's been so long ago. But uh, my editor, Charles R. Dye at, at Hard Case Crime, who's, who's the, been- The so great Charles R. Dye, mutual friend of ours. Fantastic in, 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 in really helping me uh, keep my work out there. He asked me basically to do a coda to the so He wanted a new Nolan book. And so I, even though I'd ended the series, I figured out a way to do one last story about him. Well, then it came about, well, why don't you do a coda to the Quarry series? I said, well, I don't know if I'm finished writing about Quarry, but the way it's evolved Quarry, the Quarry books are all set in the 70s and 80s, and most of them are, because it's a series I started back then, then it didn't get picked up, and then when we started doing them at, at Hard Case Crime, rather than pretend that, that, that Quarry was, you know, 35 or 40 years old in, uh, you know, 40 years later, uh, I, I wrote about the books I didn't get to write back then. I wrote about books set in, in the 70s and the 80s. Well, this book is set when he is basically 69, 70 years old. And this is the last, this it, I did a book called The Last Quarry, which I thought was The Last Quarry. This is the coda, which takes place after the book, The Last Quarry. And we're gonna find out just, just how mellow he's gotten, which isn't very <laughs> damn mellow. <laughs> Now, we we haven't mentioned the Corey. Corey's a hitman. I mean, he was he yeah. was the first series ever written about a about a hitman, and there've been many imitations, but uh, there's only one original. Right on, <laughs> right on. I, I, I mean, I, I know we're both dancing around the content of uh, Corey's blog because the last Quarry finished in a place where when I found out you're going to write another, I was like, well, that's very interesting. You know, where can you be going? And, well, uh, and I, I will reveal one thing, which is a little sad, which is that uh, he, you know, he did find a woman, a good woman that because uh, the women always kind of straightened him out. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was only temporary, usually. And when he stopped being, uh, you know, working, working in the in the hitman area, he married this this young woman and they were very happy for about 10 years. And and the 10 years since the last quarry. And she died of COVID. Right. 
Okay. So, so, uh, so I put it's a COVID very right. contemporary element yeah. to the story. So I wanted to say, first of all, they'd had a good run together because I, I thought he, you know, I always thought the most perverse thing I could do with this character was give him a happy ending. So, so I have set out to give him a second happy ending now. And what happens in this book is he's put in a situation where he has to go back into his past to figure out who's trying to kill him. There's a contract on him and he wants to figure out who took that out basically. And so we revisit about four of the stories from previous Quarry novels. And we meet, we, and we see characters who are, are like Quarry or 25, 30 years older. What are they like now? Some of the, some of the women, there are several of the women. I, I said at one point he was on a geriatric sex tour. <laughs> and, and then some of the, the, the villains that uh, uh, that he hadn't dispatched yet. So so it is a retrospective look at really the entire series. Yeah. And it goes back to the very roots of the very first book, the first book that was called Quarry, that was adapted, quite a bit of it was adapted on the Cinemax TV show a few years ago. Wonderful. Uh, and uh, Quarry's Blood is going to be out in... Um... February 22nd February. and uh, and is available for order from the links attached here and then your your next book you know sort of roaring out of the the hard case crime stable is going to be uh, the Nolan book tough tender which, yes it's, uh, a, it's which a combination of uh, two it's of the two books. novels isn't it yeah yeah and uh, I believe it is uh, I believe it's hard it's hard cash and scratch fever and What's kind of fun about this is it does visit one of the rare books of mine that visits my rock and roll background. So there's a bunch of stuff. That's why Scratch Fever is, of course, is a, a reference to Cat Scratch Fever. Uh, in my defense, when, when I wrote that book originally, uh, uh, the, the gentleman who did Cat, Cat Scratch Fever was not quite as demented as he is today. Yeah. Uh, but... Uh, that's he's all right. A, he was it's a tad more likable back then, right? Yes, he was a tad more likable, and there, but there certainly are a number of demanded people in the Nolan books, so you don't have to worry about it. But uh, it's really been terrific that again, Hard Case Crime has has brought back all the Nolan books, and we've done them in two books, to you know, to a volume. They're basically omnibus vol volumes. And it's a really good way for people to catch up. And we have wonderful covers that have been oh, done. Oh, man, the, co the covers, I think, uh, I think for the Nolan books are particularly good. Beautifully, beautifully yeah, illustrated. Very happy with, with well, they, what's ironic is I was one of the first uh, authors that uh, Charles Hardy published at Hard Case Crime originally years ago. And everybody but me was dead, basically. And he wanted to he wanted to publish my book Blood Money, which was the second quarry book or second Nolan book. And I said, Well, why don't you publish the first one? He said, Well, I like the second one better. Well, it's fine. I said, Well, then publish them both in one volume and don't give me any extra money. I'll just throw it in. And so they published it uh, as as a book called Oh gee, don't make me don't make me think about what the name of that of, of that book is. Two for the money. Yeah, two for the money, and which was two two books for the money, right? And so um, I I'll say this delicately. It's one of the only hard case crime books that doesn't have a very good cover. Hard case crime is famous, really, for its covers. Absolutely, and Absolutely. have gotten a lot of publicity, a lot of notice, a lot of praise, some criticism because some see a certain sexist nature to the covers because of the pretty girls and the guns and all that stuff. Well, I always wanted him to do, you know, do a new cover for that book. And so when when he came to me and wanted a new Nolan book, I said, well, then let's do the old ones, but give me a new cover for Two for the Money, which they did. So we have one artist who did all of the covers and uh, he really kind of, he kind of used the Lee Van Cleef aspect yeah. of, uh, of the books as the books all mentioned that he that Nolan kind of looks like Lee Van Cleef 
he looks even more like Lee Van Cleef on the covers than he does in the books. Well, I mean, your artist has really taken that concept and ran with it beautifully. And, and yeah, I, I think, wanted, I I think said, it's so listen, consistent. Do them, do them like they're movie, like they're movie posters. Yeah. And interestingly, and this is, I don't know, this may be a bit of a scoop, uh, but Lionsgate has just optioned the Nolan series. And oh, are yeah, and are talking are very serious. More than serious, they're they're preparing to do a, a Nolan feature, and it will probably combine several of the books, just as Hard Case Crime is combining several yeah. of the books into these volumes. So um, the movie poster approach that may have helped us. I, I think I think that's wonderful news. I mean, the the, the Nolan series really is wonderful. Quarry's Quarry is great is great too, undoubtedly. But I've always had a special fondness for for Nolan, which is, of course, to a degree, your your take on on Parker, right? It was definitely yes. definitely inspired by Parker. Yeah, he was. In fact, the the first book, which was called Bait Money, which is half of Two for the Money, I, I re it really was an homage to 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 Richard Stark, Don Westlake's uh, pen name for those books, and. And Don was a, a a mentor of mine, and when the when and he he liked the book and he you know he helped me with my agent, and so when the publisher came to me and said we want a series, I said well but one book is I, I was very uncomfortable one book is an homage, and you know a series is a ripoff. So I went to to Don and said, "How do you feel about this? Uh, they want me to do more books." He says, "For do more books. If they've got if the if they've got money and they want you to do more books, that's what we do. That's what we do for a living as as professional writers." And he said, "Besides, you did an older version of, of the Parker kind of character, and you teamed him with this kid because it's a it's a it's a twofer. It's it's a it's a guy who's about fifty with this, this kid who's in his early 20s. And I was back in, in the 70s, in actually late 60s when I created it, it really was about putting those two generations together, kind of my father's generation and my generation. And I do think that in Quarry and in Nolan, I was one of the first writers, crime writers of my generation to, and in particular who put in, you know, hippies and drugs and, uh, you know, rock and roll and all these elements that were, you know, who I was and, and who I still am, really. Yeah. No, Not great. drugs. Now, now, you know, I'm a, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm I know, very straight. I know, yeah, yeah. I am I actually painfully straight. <clears throat> yeah, I know you. I know you. I know you're straight as a die, mate. I, I know that. And um, I think it, I, I think it's great, though, the way you, you, you jammed all of those influences upon your life and on your literary reading life together to create this wonderful character. And, and I, it seems to me, because we've talked about this a couple of times over the years, where he's actually ended up going to has must have exceeded your expectations in the first instance. Well, I always thought that Quarry in particular was something special. Yeah. Because nobody had nobody had really done novels where where the hitman was the hero. Now Quarry evolves into a to a hitman who hits hitmen, but initially he's just just a hitman. And for the reader to I I, I knew that readers could identify with a robber, a thief like like Parker or Nolan. That was the you know the Bonnie and Clyde era. Uh, of popular culture and we you know we we're fine with knocking over banks but i wanted i wanted to see how people if people could deal with being in the head of a killer and and it was an experiment basically and it it really worked and i did four books and they didn't ask for any more and i'm like oh gee i thought that was going to be my deal i thought this was the thing that was going to put me on the map and it didn't but over the years i was getting letters about uh, this is pre you know pre email certainly pre uh, you know twitter and so on and that they would ask me you know these fan letters would ask me about doing quarry again 
And it eventually added up to Charles R. Dye asking me to do quarry at, at hard case crime. And I said, well, well, I'll let me just do one more. Let me do one more and I can end the series. And so I did the last quarry. And then it sold really well. And we got these great reviews. And Charles literally were standing in a buffet line, like at an MWA, Mr. Raiders of America event. And he said, uh, it was too bad you wrote the last quarry. And I said, well, how about I write the first quarry? So that's when I wrote the first quarry about his first, you know, his first hit. And then since then, we've written, I think there's something like 15 or 16 quarry novels now. Yeah. So, I, I, but, but Nolan, I, I am surprised that Nolan's had the staying power because it was an imitation. Yeah. I mean, I'm very frank about that. I used to say to him, uh, he, he would say about me that I was this Jane Mansfield to his, to his <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. And I would say, well, I kind of think more like Mamie Van Doren, but you no, know, that's, uh, we, you know, we'll, 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 we'll agree to disagree, but he was very influential on my career. Yeah, he was the last writer I I discovered who really impacted how I write, and I still, if I'm in third person, I'm very influenced by, uh, where I'm very influenced by Westlake. Now in first person, I'm much more influenced by Mickey Spillane. Uh, Which, by the way, Max, I think is a a beautiful segue into uh, some of the some of the other very important things within this space that you've been working on for this year, because this year, 2022, is indeed the 75th anniversary of Mike Hammer, of Mike Hammer's first appearance in either jury. That's correct. And we we have a very big year in store. At Titan, we're doing, as you know, because you edited the book, uh, a, a book called Kill Me If You Can. Yeah. But we, it's a special volume because it's the, it's, it's a, it's the 2022 my camera novel where i'm i'm really it's written based upon unproduced screenplays that mickey wrote about my camera so it's got a real genuine uh spoiling content in it but and i i think vivian and nick at uh who, who at are the I, owners of titan books they allowed me to my fearless to, leaders if you will uh, they allowed me to put five Hammerverse short stories as a, basically like a Blu-ray or a DVD bonus yeah. feature at the end after the book, after the novel. And two of them are Hammer short stories that are very key stories in the canon. And three just are in, you know, his world, his world of Manhattan. And uh, that's going to be a very special book. I, I mean, as, as you know, when I was uh, when I was um, when I was editing it, one of the great one of the things that was so exciting when I I came to read the manuscript is that is that um, is that what the novel does is it it, it adds in a tremendous piece of uh, Mike Hammer lore because it fills in the gap between Kiss Me Deadly and the Girl Hunters the gap in which Velda his lover secretary um, partner fellow PI goes missing and is missing for a long period of time in the in the Hammer mythology. And um, it fills in that gap as to what happened. And yes, uh, in, in terms of the continuity, it's supposed to be about seven years. And yeah. in terms of when it was between publications, it's 10 years between Hammer novels, which was crazy because he was the most popular mystery writer. We are really most popular writer in America at the, at the time that he stopped writing. But I, I figured out why he stopped writing. And I reveal it in another book not published by Titan, uh, called Spillane, King of Pulp Fiction, which is going to be published by Mysterious Press toward the end of this year. The first full biography of Mickey Spillane, co-written with my friend James Trailer. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to reveal. I do. I now know why he didn't write any of my camera books for ten years. I will not tell you. I'll make you buy that book to find out. Very wise. So, so just to talk about the timeline here, we've got <clears throat> Quarry's Blood is out in February 22. Tough Tender is out in April 22, 22, right, Max, I think? I think so. And when, and aren't we in August? Uh, and on... Kill, Kill Me If You Can is published in August 22. And then 
Spillane, King of the Pulps, will come right at the end of the year from Mysterious right. Press. Yeah, and there's the a couple the other uh, non my camera books coming out from various publishers, uh, but uh, these are the two the, the two really biggies are the the Titan novel and the the biography of uh, of Mickey Spillane. And, and as we get a bit closer to publication, uh, uh, you'll come back onto Forbidden Planet TV and we'll talk a bit more about Kill Me If You Can, and we'll talk a bit more about the Spillane biography. Well, maybe you'll be able to twist my arm and I'll tell you why there were no My Camera books between 1952 and 1962. So you heard it here first. When you come and visit the next conversation that Max has with him here at Forbidden Planet TV, we might hear about oh, a bit of that My Camera law. We call that a cliffhanger in the business. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. It's very, very Republic pictures in its feel. Uh, yeah, the, the, that perhaps the the ultimate the ultimate purveyors of uh, serial cliffhangers, you know you can't beat a right. uh, you can't beat a oh man a William Whitney cliffhanger you can't beat. And William Whitney directed many episodes of the My Camera TV show with Darren McGavin. Yeah, uh, Qu Quentin Tarantino's favorite action director, the man who essentially invented the language of action cinema, yeah. was William Whitney. Absolutely. Man, we could do a whole episode on this. I'm, I'm raring to go to have this entire conversation. You know, to, uh, giant, gi giants of cliffhanger cinema. That's uh, that, but we'll save that for another time. In the meantime, three of the books we've talked about: Quarry's Blood, Tough Tender, and The Great Kill Me If You Can. All great books um, can be ordered from the links attached to this conversation. And uh, Spillane, King of the Pulps, will be out from Mysterious Press at the end of the is, year as well is there any possibility that they could also get skim deep the 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 nolan novel right here right here yeah for sure okay skim right. deep's just, here too just checking just checking yeah i think you'll find there's an endless range of fine <laughs> max allen Collin, collins books you can order from the links attached to this conversation max it's always great to see you mate i mean oh, it's so much I, fun I, I say it like i see you early but in fact i i see you a great deal it's but it, however often it is it's never enough mate oh thank you thank you andrew yeah you take care of yourself and i'll see you very soon same to you thank you if you're enjoying watching forbidden planet tv and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers authors artists musicians creators Subscribe right here. See you soon.